All right, it's time to speed run how fast I'm going to despise this game. Let me tell you something. I hate how I just have to tank your stupid little sneak attack. Listen, I already struggled with the combat due to its limited movement. Uh, this game does not exactly have the best mobility. So I thought, why not limit myself even more? I'm going to be using only the stun baton, Shiv included, on maximum security. Because I haven't experienced enough pain with Elden Ring just yet. I mean, yeah, I'm going to use nothing except for the stun baton unless it is absolutely necessary in order to move forward in the story or something similar. I mean, I've got nothing more to say. It's pretty self-explanatory. So without further ado, my name is Josh, and I hope you enjoy. Can you beat the Kalisto Protocol with only the stun baton? Or whatever I'm going to name this video. Nothing like a prison break to start off a horror game. We meet Elias, our partner in crime, in order to escape Black Iron Prison. Some gang members occupy the control panel, but no worries, as I am a master at quick time events. Okay. <laughs> you or me, buddy. Unfortunately... Alright. I am not a master at the combat in this game just yet, and considering that on the highest difficulty I die between, I would say, two to three hits, this is not going to be easy. And if you were wondering, uh, blocking doesn't really help, it, they still take a large chunk of my health regardless. So that's not really an option at this point. Pushing forward, we find the stun baton, the main weapon for this run, and thus officially beginning the challenge. My moveset includes the R2 combo and later on, a heavy attack. And that's about it. That's pretty much my moveset. I can already tell that this challenge is going to be extravagantly irritating. But I, you guys like to see me suffer, so... Elias tries to be helpful though by giving us a gun, but what he doesn't know is that not a single bullet will leave that chamber. <laughs> I'm good. All I need is the stun baton. <laughs> now one of the main issues with doing a melee only challenge run is that Jacob can get swarmed very easily. If there is more than one enemy at a time in this game, which there is, you would think it'd be impossible to move forward without guns. However, I discovered early on that the mutated, disgusting freaks have an utmost high respect for taking turns. There could be five of them in front of me, but as long as only one attacks at a time, I'll be completely fine. The only issue is keeping them in front of me. Like, if I kill one dude in the front, and the one behind me starts to commence a Mortal Kombat combo on my backside, the dodging mechanics don't really know what to do with that, so, you know, I'll get hit. Regardless, the next few encounters I was able to get past with some patience and determination. I upgraded the baton to use the heavy attack, which launches our foes with brute force. This will be pretty useful for knocking opponents off platforms, doing high damage, and more. I also took the time to take this amazing screenshot, so here you are. Please rate this screenshot on a scale of 1 to 10 in the comment section down below. Thank you. This next section I like to call the saw room. Now I thought this room would be easy, cause you know, bunch of saws, you can knock them in there. It was not. Mainly because the angles at which you launch the monsters is not exactly preferable. Like after they would attack, they back up, so I barely had enough time to reposition myself before that monster would try to attack again. Not to mention that Jacob's dodges puts him in a different position as well. So trying to adjust myself in order to launch them into the saws was more of an IQ test than anything else, uh, which I failed miserably. I mean, it only took a few attempts, about 40 minutes in total, but I got through just the same. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, one of the most crucial upgrades was the block break, and I finally had access to it. See, these abominations just love to hold back on the joystick and block Jacob's attacks, making the entire encounter last much longer than it should. So with this upgrade, blocking is no longer an option, allowing them to qualify for handicap parking. Honestly, we're looking pretty good. Our baton is doing great damage. We have enough health. I'm starting to get used to the combat now. I've done this joke before, and I'm going to do it again. What could possibly go wrong? Mm, yeah. Okay, so if you don't know, most enemies from this point on will mutate at about half health, growing stronger and of course, bulkier. The only possible way to prevent this is to shoot the exposed tentacles before it happens. Unfortunately for me, I took an oath to never use guns again, so I essentially have to fight two enemies in one from now on. At least when it comes to the normal guys, the man crawlers, as I like to call them, uh, they don't mutate as well as some other folks later on, but the common ones will always mutate from here on out. It's, it's quite annoying, but it's mostly the same deal, just with more health, pretty much. 
The water slide part of the game was next, and it was pretty easy. I only took a minor scratch. While there is no combat in this section, I just wanted to show you. I put some Mario music over this, so please enjoy. I thought it was entertaining. Let's move on. The hallway section was one of my most anticipated harder segments. I was correct, mainly because I tried to pull a movie hero move and attack all of them at once. Plot armor is not exactly prominent in horror games, so it's just, it's not gonna work. I realized though that I could wait for this guy to show up, wait at the mouth of the entrance, and pulverize him in a 1v1. The other monsters wouldn't spawn in until I got close, so it was a game of triggering their entrances, stepping back a little, and beating them senseless. Like I said earlier, taking them on one at a time, no issue at all. We finally meet up with Elias once more to venture outside, but Captain Ferris intervenes and sends us out prematurely. Elias is critically injured, thanking Jacob for he finally made it outside before taking his final breath. Yeah, okay, nobody cares. Now while I was outside, I realized something. I could perform an infinite combo. Here's the trick. I attacked two to three times, avoiding the usual combo finisher with the aim snap, and then I would use the heavy attack to knock them down. As they get up, the standard two to three attacks, knock them down, rinse and repeat. This was incredibly useful as I didn't have to risk getting hit nearly as much, making the fights quicker, monsters could encounter, more manageable. I mean, there really was no downside to this discovery. It was very neat. The outside arena was much easier than I thought due to the low health of the man crawlers and other enemies that would only spawn in when you got close to them. I basically chilled in a corner the whole time, waiting for the monsters to approach me, and I only died about three times, so it was a smooth encounter overall, nothing really to say here. However, this game knows that I'm having a good time. So they introduce one of the absolute worst monsters for this challenge. Here we go. Oh gosh, this is... The pimple poppers are similar to creepers. They'll explode once they reach Jacob's toes, dealing a significant amount of damage or death if I'm below, I would say, 80% health. Now obviously this poses a problem because the mobility of this game is worse than being overweight in Elden Ring. My only option is to tank the hits, which again are not exactly light jabs. So I now have a decision to make. Do I allow myself to get hit in order to stay as faithful as I can to the run, or do I give myself some wiggle room? Here's what I'll do, okay? I will be allowed to throw them, but I will not use them as weapons. I can't throw them at other enemies. This area alone where they're introduced has about, I would say, four of them. It is impossible to go through this place and tank every single hit. I, I just, I don't have enough drugs to heal myself. There's simply no chance. If you want to say the run ends here, sure, but I kept going. I really wanted to see how far I could take this. Oh, shit. Whoa! Hey, need some help here. Don't worry, I got a baton! Uh, we finally meet up with Danny, as she's the girl who raided my ship and shanked Elias for information. But we had an all-out brawl that was pretty easy with the spikes in the arena and headed upstairs for further instructions. Let's go up the stairs, me and you. Come on. Up the stairs! Up the stairs! You listen to your daddy! <laughs> Alright, you made my job easier. I'm here now. <laughs> At this point, I was finally able to upgrade the damage to its maximum. This baton packs a major punch now. The damage difference is very noticeable, and I'm happy with the results. My first test with the new baton was the Saw Room 2.0, and as expected, Daddy does deadly damage. We make it out alive after the Warden shoots down our ship, but Jacob falls even more to the depths below, where we encounter clickers. I mean, uh, sorry, that's not their names. What are these guys called again? The Blind. It's the same thing. Nobody's creative anymore. It's the same stupid monster types with all these horror games. Anyways, these guys, just like clickers, rely on sound, which means the stealth mechanic is now my favorite thing to use for this portion of the challenge. Hey, like I said, the shiv counts, so technically I'm, st I'm still uh, green light. To be fair, they're not that difficult normally, so it really doesn't matter. They have less health. But I do appreciate this break in between the rough encounters. Ironically, I just hate this part of the game. It's just a big, annoying puzzle. Turn on the generators, like I haven't done that before in every single horror game beforehand. 
then turn on the brakes, grab key car to access power. Not in that order, but <laughs> you get the idea. It's just boring. There's nothing fascinating about collecting things just to flick a switch, which is why the platform section more than made up for it. I... look, okay, normally this part is no issue, you just use the GRP to fling them off, but because I can't do that, I have to face four of these mutated freaks at the same time. But Josh, as long as they only attack one at a time, it'll be easy, right? N not exactly. See, the infinite combo doesn't actually work with a crowd watching, because normally, a combo is just smashing R2 until you get the aim snap prompt. That's your combo finisher, that's the only traditional combo in the game, where once you finish, the monsters will try to attack. If I do a heavy attack in between that combo, the monsters think that's the end of my combo, therefore they try to attack. The R1 heavy attack's lag does not allow me enough time to dodge, so at this point I can only do the traditional R2 combo and hope for the best. The problem here is that as soon as a monster dies, or as soon as I input R1, the other monsters attack. Even in the middle of my execution animation, sometimes they'll interrupt me. Which kind of brings me back to my For Honor days. Those duels, man, they were more toxic than Muck from Pokemon. Sometimes the monsters I'm focusing on will attack, other times his goons will take their turn. So it's really an uneven game of figuring out who's next. If I get surrounded from behind or even at a weird angle from the side, my dodges won't register and I'll die in about, I would say, two hits. Halfway through my attempts, which at this point was like 40 minutes, I realized that I could stand near this open spot and the monsters would spawn there instead of on the side rails. It was really easy to knock them off from there, but after the first wave, which there were four by the way, they'll spawn at the rails and I can't knock them over said rails. About 16 monsters in total, four at a time, it was a nightmare. I got to admire the gruesome death scenes many, many times. But after about an hour and a half, I managed to knock off a good amount of enemies or smack them with the baton. Now if you thought that part was difficult, well get ready! For Mr. Two-Head, I want you guys to understand something, okay? I tried for two hours to get some sort of leverage against this guy, without so much as getting a few hits off each attempt. Let me explain why Mr. Two-Head is mechanically impossible to take down with only a baton. Firstly, Jacob doesn't dodge normally against this mini-boss. Instead, he'll duck and slide away, creating enough distance where I can't immediately retaliate without, you know, Mr. Two-Head curb stomping my face in. So I had to get a bit creative. There were these large containers on the platform, so what I did was push myself against the side of one. Once Jacob attempts to dodge, he'll be stuck in place, allowing me to immediately hit with the baton and dodge Mr. Two-Head's larger appendage. The only problem, however, is that the smaller arm is much quicker, and on maximum security, it's a one-shot regardless, it doesn't matter. With this strategy, I could maybe dodge the big arm consistently, but once he uses the smaller arm, you get the picture. I can't hit Mr. Two-Head normally, I had to corner myself, and even then, he's still too quick. I thought this was the end of the run, there was absolutely no way I could beat this guy without using my guns. And then, this happened. Oh! <laughs> I can't believe that worked! I'll take it! Like I said in the clip, I'll take it. I beat Mr. Two-Head without so much as touching him. I think it counts, the run continues. Thankfully, there are no more Mr. Two Heads, especially five minutes after that ordeal. Yeah, so <laughs> this one was a different story. Unlike the first encounter, there is no platform to knock him off of, and to add some spice to the mix, two normal enemies will spawn in the fight. So I can't glitch him off, I can't melee him outright because we know how that turns out, there's simply no way to beat this thing with only the stun baton. I've tried to glitch him, corner him, seduce him, bribe him. Anything I tried to do to give me an advantage was met with a stinky foot, you know, crushing my face. I hate to say it, but this is where the run officially ends. I can't do it. I tried for hours with absolutely no luck at all. Now that doesn't mean I won't finish the game. Look at the video's length. I, we, we still have some time left. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna still try to beat the game by using the stun baton as much as possible. If I have to use the GRP, then so be it. But I will not, under any circumstances, use the guns. 
I mean, the challenge at this point is to see if I can still beat the game without using my guns, which will still be difficult, but let's find out. With that being said, the strategy now was to get rid of the annoying underlings and focus on the big guy. I launched an explosive to give me a head start, and then, for 15 minutes, I circled the arena throwing empty gas cans and chairs at Mr. Two-Head. I didn't think it would work at first, but then he keeled over from all the bruising, so hey, that's a start. Then there was the third Mr. Two-Head, and this time I had no debris to pelt him with, but I had some cover. My thought process was that the cover would provide enough protection, and I was hoping that the cover was thin enough where my baton would reach while the monster was still chasing me. Turns out, it does reach, but only as he's about to turn around the corner. So I had to play pretty much merry-go-round with Mr. Two-Head for another 15 minutes until he died. Sometimes it would hit, other times it wouldn't, but as long as I caught him behind the cover, he wouldn't retaliate. This game gave me another scare. I, I thought for a moment there was no chance to beat him without using guns here, but thankfully, I uh, big brain. The fourth encounter, I was just about done with all the bullcrap this game put me through. In between all the Mr. Two Heads, there was other encounters. I did not exactly enjoy those encounters, uh, but yeah. This fight really highlighted the sheer aggravation that is the mobility of this stupid game. You are being chased by a gargantuan mutated monster. Right. It infinitely pains me to have games like this that don't comprehend that running is faster than walking. If I have a run button, it should work 100% of the time. Jacob slowly walking around like he's being chased by a child aggravates me to no end. It's so dumb, I almost busted a blood vessel. I just... <sighs> I'm almost done with my script, let's just move on. Regardless of the annoyance throughout this fight, more bruising did the trick. As a matter of fact, the second phase was much easier because Mr. Two-Head rips off the half with a smaller arm, so my corner strategy worked here because the bigger arm gave me barely enough time to hit and dodge. Up next was the final boss, Captain Ferris, and the first phase was a cakewalk. Nothing out of the ordinary, as easy as the first enemies in the game. The second phase, however, uh, was mechanically impossible. I know I said that earlier, but I tried for two hours, baton only, without so much as landing a hit. Funny enough, I had more than enough time to land two swings in between his melee attacks, but the issue here is that they wouldn't register. His head is the only weak spot, and no matter how many angles, how many swings I attempted, I couldn't hit it or even reach it. So, unfortunately, I had to resort to my guns. There was simply no way to get past the final boss without shooting. I could do some damage with the GRP by throwing explosives at first, but after that, there was no chance. I watched the final cutscene and then I shut the game off and deleted it off my console because <laughs> I am- I, I'm done, I'm done. So here's the verdict. Is it possible to beat the Kalisto Protocol with only the stun baton? No. No, it is not. Technically, where the pimple poppers were first introduced is where the run died there, because I couldn't get past it without using the GRP. But honestly, I got much further than expected. I mean, I beat two out of the four Mr. Two Heads with only the baton. The next question is, can I beat the Kalisto Protocol without guns? Unfortunately, no. The final boss requires some mediocre gunplay in order to take him down. Although, to be fair, we got to the very end without so much as firing a single bullet. I mean, I'll take it, that's pretty impressive. And honestly guys, I really enjoyed this run. It was so much fun to go through, and even though I had my rough patches, like, I, I, I can't wait to upload this, seriously. I think you guys will enjoy it, and I hope you did. This was probably one of my favorite challenge runs thus far because I got past so many obstacles in niche or clever ways, and it was really satisfying. But, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and of course, stay safe.